I mean, you know, Nate Walker is, you know, it's jokes, spaghetti, and occasional moon pies. I mean, for the most part, like, I like, I like to play around. I don't really take a lot of stuff serious. Uh, that's why most of my songs are, you know, party related. I do have some deeper ones because, you know, I have been through some stuff. So, you know, I like to, to write on that sometimes to give it, you know, a good balance. Uh, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, and now I'm in Atlanta. I've lived in tons of places, though, so I kind of relate to everybody, you know. Yeah, I, I I suppose so. It was it was it was a couple moments though. Like like the first the first big moment was actually when I was on when I got offered to go on tour with Swayze, who uh, you know Swayze and Cisco Adler. He's you know signed to Geffen, and uh, I got you know like I had opened up for him in Kentucky, and he came off the bus because you know the crowd was you know getting hyped, and so he was like, "Yo, like you should." You should you should come on the road with me, you know, when I got off the stage and stuff. I was like, right? Like, I thought he was just playing, but he called me the next day. I was like, yo, are you, you rolling with us or what? And I was like, yeah. So that was like, you know, wow for me, you know. So I wow know. was actually, yeah, like I was, I was ecstatic. I was like, wow, that's crazy. And from that, uh, while I was on the road with him, it was like 30 cities. And I think like halfway through it, I got a call about, you know, blaming getting placed. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. So, like, this is cool. <laughs> right, so, so kind of the whole thing. Right, so one minute you're excited about the tour, of course, because you're just like, wow, okay, so I'm about to go on the, on all of these dates. But after yeah. that, don't you ever get tired of traveling and stuff? Do you ever get tired of that? Nah, nah. See, you know, like, my mom, she, she moved around a lot when I was younger. So, you know, me being a kid, I always had to go with her. So I'm kind of used to not sitting still, like, I got to actually kind of go to places, you know, somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's just down the street, like I'll stay at a friend's house for, you know, a day or something if I'm here too long. Mm -hmm. It's in me. It's in me to move, you know? <laughs> two years ago, I was working in retail in Indiana, and... My homeboy, David Ballard, who I went to high school with, he was going to Morehouse, and he, he would always tell me about, you know, like, the Atlanta music scene. Like, yo, dude, you got to come out here, be Like, you know, like, I'd be running into everybody, you know. Like, I've seen Fabulous at the club. Like, Nas came out of school and performed. I'm like, word, that's crazy. So, um, like, you know, he, he would always tell me that. And then, like, my job offered me, like, a better position. And the position, you know, is like you got to sign, like, a contract to where it's like, you agreeing to be, like, a part of the whole system and plan. So it's like, you know, they show you where you're going to be, you know, next year and the year after and so on and so forth. And so I kind of, you know, I was excited at the moment, but then I got home and I was like, wow, like, this is not, you know, really what I wanted to do and be, you know, like, this is not really part of my plan. So uh, I called my homie, like, yo, like, like, is Atlanta music scene really popping like that? He's like, yeah. So I was like, man. Um, they just offered me a better position, but I don't want to take it. I want to move to Atlanta, but I ain't got nowhere to stay, homie. He's like, well, he's like, I mean, you know, I got an apartment. He's like, you can stay in the living room, but I don't got no couch, so you got to sleep on the floor. I was like, you know, it's nothing. You know, we do, so, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, so I just, you know. But you got to do what you got to do to get to where you want to exactly. be. So, hey, I'm not, you got to crawl before you walk in life all the time. So, hey. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's exactly what I did, man. Uh, you know, emptied out my bank account, had like 800 bucks, came down there. I was doing CDs, you know, on the side just for, you know, like food money and stuff like that. But because I had to pay rent, I, could, I was able to focus on music. So it was, you know, it was just kind of crazy, like, you know, within, like, three months, like, everything just started happening. So it's perfect. So, I mean, if you were on tour with Swayze, how did you hook up to write the Jamie Foxx song, Blame It, and then you did Trey's song, Say I? So how did you hook up for those type of songs? Like, how did you get up in there? Well, like, with Blame It, my, um, like, I came up with the, the lyrics to the hook and the melody and stuff um, on my way to see my grandma one night. And so... 
one night I was with David, and he produces, you know, my homie I was staying with, he produces, so I had, you know, sung it for him, and he was like, yo, that's crazy, dude, we gotta, we gotta record that, we gotta record that, so he made a track right there, we recorded it in his living room, and uh, we gave it to one of our dudes that we thought was our homie, but, you know, it turned out he was really kind of shady, because um, he was, like, in the industry, you know, he worked for, like, a label and all that, so... She was like, yeah, man, well, he didn't really work for a label. We thought he did, but he kept telling us, like, yo, man, we about to, I'm about to get this, um, I'm about to get this position over here at this label, B. Like, I can shop y'all stuff. So we gave it to him. Uh, he gave it to Chris Henderson, who produced the version that, you know, everybody knows today. And, uh, but he didn't tell Chris that, like, he didn't tell Chris about us. He told us, he told Chris, like, that he did it, you know, like, yo, this is a song I wrote and produced, like, let's, mm -hmm. you know, make it better. Yeah. So Chris, you know, redid the track and they kept the hook and, you know, they did verses on it and stuff like that and put it out. So, I mean, it was, it was kind of, you know, it was bittersweet, you know, at the same time because, like, my homie David, he didn't really get no shine from it. Which was, you know, a little not cool for me, but, you know, we, you know, he's, 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 uh, he's in law school now, so when he graduates, you know, like, I'm, I'm about to bring him out here and we're gonna, you know, keep, keep, it, keep it moving, you know? But, uh, yeah, man, so, anyway, yeah, so I got the news about that on the road, but, you know, like, I was, you know, it's like, I didn't really care, I don't, you know, I was just like, but that's that, but that's so hard time and work that you've been put into something, and then for somebody else to take credit for that. To me, I just think that that's right. awful. You know what I'm saying? But right. I went on, and this is a bad source, by the way. But I went on Wikipedia the other day, and of course, I looked up who was the writers for blaming. And of course, I saw your name on there. So you at least did get something out of what you did. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I had my copyright, so you know it wasn't like. So, but the guy didn't know I had it, so. You know, that's why Chris Henderson had to actually call me. Chris Henderson, the one who, who called me and was like, yo, uh, what's your affiliation to blame it? And I was like, what do you mean? It's my song. Like, it was on my MySpace at the time, right? And so he's mm -hmm. like, oh, man, we got a problem. He's like, you know a dude, I ain't going to say his name, but he's like, you know a dude by the name of, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah. He was like, well, I think he, he duped both of us. I was like, oh, man. So, uh. You know, since I had a copyright, I was still, you know, like I wasn't really stressed, you know. I was like, well, we just got to kind of agree to, you know, terms, like percentage-wise. And so that that's kind of how I came into the industry, you know. Right. Okay. Okay. And then how did we get to Jamie? Uh, he had already, like, the, the Jamie's album was like two weeks from being, you know, coming out when I got a call that, you know, Blame was on there because, you know, that's when Chris called me while I was on the road. Uh, he got the record to Jamie. Uh, how do you say he did that? He he initially wanted it to go to R. Kelly, but R. Kelly, you know, passed up on it because uh, he, you know, he was like, you know, feel like it was a single, but he would, you know, have it on the album or something like that. And so, uh, you know, Chris was like, nah, like this needs to be a single. So Chris was actually the one to, you know, fly out to L.A., you know, let Breon hear it and, you know, get him to, you know, let Jamie record it and all that stuff. So, you know, a lot of credit goes to Chris for actually making it happen. And you know what? That just shows, like, what God has for you is for you, and can't nobody ever take that away from you. That's one thing, because no matter what that guy tried to do or, you know, he tried to kind of play you in the end or not give you no credit, it just seemed yeah. like God gave you all the credit because my mother always tell you, can't nobody ever take what God has for you. The plan is already written no matter what people try to do. So, Hallelujah. I mean, yeah. Right. Amen on that. Okay. 